This is a training video on sternal precautions and the proper handling of patients following open heart surgery. The general precautions given to the patients after surgery are no pulling, no pushing, and no lifting more than 5 pounds. 5 pounds is roughly half a gallon of milk. Patients should limit arm motion if pain is present. They should not sleep with their hands behind their head, and they should hug their heart pillow to their chest to help remind them not to use their arms and aid in coughing. These precautions should be followed for six to eight weeks following their surgery, and they are important so that the patient can reduce the risk of improper healing of their bone and incision. The first item we will be addressing is bed mobility. We will address the proper sequence in getting a patient out of bed safely without breaking their sternal precautions. From the supine position, have the patient cross their arms across their heart pillow so that their elbows are not touching the bed. This will help prevent them from wanting to push with their arms. Also have them bend both of their knees up. The patient should look like the individual in this picture. Next, have the patient roll towards you. Make sure they keep their knees bent. You may assist the patient with rolling by placing one hand on their upper back and the other on the side of their thigh as shown in the following photos and video clip. It is important not to pull on their arms so that you do not break their sternal precautions. Once the patient is lying on their side, have them place both of their legs over the side of the bed. Notice the placement of your hands in this picture. They should be repositioned so that they are both on the upper back of the patient. Instruct the patient again not to use their arms and to pull their legs against the bed to get into the sitting position. With your hands already placed on their upper back, you are in a good position to assist them into sitting without pulling on their arms. Here are all the steps to get from supine to sit put together. To get back into bed from the sitting position, it is basically the reverse process from getting up. First make sure the patient is sitting closer to the head of the bed so that when they lay down their head will be on the pillow. Again make sure the patient is hugging their heart pillow so they are less tempted to use their arms. Your hands will be on their upper back of the patient just like when you are helping the patient get into sitting as shown in the following photos. Help guide the patient onto their side and as they are contacting the bed begin to have them roll on their back. This small amount of rolling will help bring their legs up onto the bed. After you have laid them down, you may then help the patient finish bringing their legs onto the bed or reposition them if needed. Here is the entire process from start to finish. Now we will adjust transfers. First, have the patient scoot to the edge of the bed or chair. This will make the sit to stand much easier. They can do this by wiggling their way forward using just their legs. With some patients, you may need to manually assist them by pulling their hips forward on the bed. With sit to stand, you want to position yourself on the side of the patient with one hand on the middle of their back as demonstrated in the pictures and your other hand over their pillow and crossed arms. You want to firmly but gently squeeze them between your arms to help support them with standing. Instruct the patient to bend forward and get their nose over their toes. It is often beneficial to do a 1, 2, 3 count where the patient rocks forward with each count and then stands on 3. Your positioning on the side of the patient also allows them to have more room of getting their weight forward and easing the transition from sit to stand. For patients who require more assistance with standing and transfers, there is an alternate position which will be covered next in the stand pivot transfer section. If the patient is unable to take very many steps or requires a lot of assistance, it is better to stand in front of the patient. Use your knees to block the patient's knees from buckling and place both of your hands on the back of the patient below their rib cage so that you can have good control of the patient. Again, follow the same procedure for getting up by rocking forward using the 1, 2, 3 count and standing on 3. Once in standing, you can then pivot you and the patient together either into the bed or to a chair. Stay close to the patient during all transfers to improve your control, stability, and safety of the patient at all times. Once the sitting surface is behind the patient, slowly lower them into a sitting position. If you are going to walk the patient, first make sure they are wearing a pair of no-slip socks and have a second gown covering their backside. Maintain close contact with the patient to ensure they don't fall or lose their balance. Remember to walk slowly and not overwork their heart. 
If you are walking a patient in the six to eight weeks following their open heart surgery, be aware of what assistive equipment you may use with the patient that does not interfere with their sternal precautions. That means patients are not to use any type of assistive device for walking, such as a walker, cane, or crutches. These all require more than five pounds of force to be used through their arms. In the acute hospital and rehab, cardiac walkers are discouraged. Only use with caution so that the patient is only lightly resting their arms on it for balance and not putting weight through their arms. Now that you have learned the correct way to work with patients following cardiac surgery, it is important to point out the common mistakes that many people make that are not safe. Each of the following photos and video clips demonstrate bad hand placement when assisting the patient because they cause you to pull on their arms, in result breaking their sternal precautions and putting the patient at risk for not healing properly. This concludes this presentation on sternal precautions in the cardiac patient.